always say this to people who are going back. The same aunties that were praising you for your pink hair mm -hmm. and your, your short skirt in December Their are hairs. gonna call you a shawo so, in January. Yeah. Yeah. When I went back home, I wore a dress that for here is normal. The way I was insulted, <laughs> the way I, my they you told me my bad. mom didn't raise me yes. properly wow. all the time. It Easy. really and yeah. I I was I read is a whole tradition. Welcome back to the African Millennials. Today we're having another episode with new faces. So I would let you guys have the floor, introduce yourself, your name, your age, and where you're from, and hopefully what you're looking for for this season. Let's start with the ladies. Okay, so hi y'all, my name is Bridget. Hey girl. Yes. <laughs> I'm 23, I'm repping for Ghana mm -hmm. and the Bronx, BX, yes. all day. <laughs> and I'm glad to be here with y'all. Glad to have you. <laughs> Well, hey. Naomi, we know, but you go ahead. You know you, though. Like, Y'all know, know me. Right? <laughs> That's the intro. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. me. Right. Tsunami. All right, Slate. Some things. Y'all know me. New faces. Let's get. Hey everyone, I'm Zenobi, I'm 25, repping Ghana. I'm hey. from Harlem. Hey. Let's sing. Let's sing. I'm Al Shabazz, Java Tay. I'm 25, rep in Liberia. Hey. Hey. Uh, you know, from Jersey, like so I'm going to be uh, keeping everything under control here. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. I'm a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? I'm Tunde, 27, uh, Nigerian by way of Connecticut, content creator, media strategist, and Ooh. I'm happy to be here. Give them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drop them. 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 Drop from Nigeria, the best country out there. Okay. My pleasure being here with you guys again. Okay. Oh, yeah, nice okay. <laughs> so, this question for the episode, it's going to be my pleasure reading this to you guys. All right. And this is from Ruth. And she's from Ohio. She says, Dear AMs, I love you guys. And I love Africa. Mm -hmm. But every time I think of relocating back to Ninja, <laughs> the thoughts of dealing with power outage, limited internet, poor infrastructure, etc., stops me. My question is would you relocate to Africa? That's a tough one. Ooh, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't think I would. I would. Yeah. You would? Yeah. Why? I would. Why? Because I want to create jobs, like, I want to start businesses there. Um, you know, I want to be closer to my family, make it full circle. Like, I wouldn't want to, and then I feel like, to me personally, it's e easier to live in Ghana than it is mm -hmm. here. You don't think so, Milan? <laughs> 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 oh, we do have free Ghanaians. Yeah. Um, I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm treated like a queen, you know, oh. when I go. Um, okay. Well, how, long <laughs> did you, I'm sorry, how long did you stay in Ghana for? The longest I've stayed was a year and a half. Oh, um, Continuously. Okay, so, um... To my knowledge, um, when you go to Africa, they only treat you like a king or a queen for like two weeks. <laughs> After that, they, they, they get tired of you. Yeah, it's just a grace period <laughs> thing. Um, I don't think I would relocate um, to Africa because I just feel like it's too much. Um, with the power thing she was talking about, um, it's very expensive to live in Africa. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> no, 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 true. Um, now, with now in Africa, we even spend dollars. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And everything back home is like super expensive. It's like whatever, if it's $3 in America, it's like $5 in Ghana. So I don't see how the living in um, Africa is, is better than living in America. But if we're talking, if I'm saying that I would relocate, that's 10 years from now, I would set myself up to where I'm shipping things to myself and 
make it easier, but I would want to go back. Ten years from now, or yeah, like currently? in the future, I would relocate. I don't think it's a requirement to go back to your country and you that you have to feel obligated to go back to where you come from and give back. I don't think anybody should feel obligated to do that. Me personally, I want to do that. Like I want to go back to Ghana and give back and create schools, create hospitals if I could. Um, and I think people should do that. Because I, I, I want to be able to do it now. But I feel like if I were to relocate, it would I would be bi coastal. Like mm. I wouldn't be yeah. full time. And right. then it, I would be right. like a couple of months, couple of months back for the and summer. Forth. Yeah, yeah. Too. I would feel like I couldn't go there. I'm too spoiled with the uh, <laughs> with America. <laughs> I was gonna um, say I've got I got so used to technology. Like the moment I go somewhere, it's not no Wi-Fi. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be tight, you know. I'm just like connecting the to technological norms that we have here. I think that um, the biggest difference is going from a first world country to a third world country, is that we've become so Americanized and accustomed. I know me myself. I don't know how many days I could last. Uh, I think ideally for me, one day is to just have enough money to just go for four days, five nights type of thing. <laughs> so Liberia is. Um, I've always wanted to visit, you know, but oh, you've never been to I've never been. Oh, and wow. um it's a lot of, lot of situations there. Uh we just got a new president and it's kind of some people view it the same way as like Trump is viewed here. So Trump was a celebrity and George Weah is a, is a celebrity soccer player. So a lot of people don't feel like he even know what he's doing. And uh I mean Liberia just has a constant situations with uh with the child soldiers and all that stuff and I'm not sure it's I'm not sure if it's in the cars for me. Yeah. I think it's a good yeah. idea. And I don't think I would because, first of all, in Congo, it's like we had the same president for like 40 years. Mm -hmm. So the system, politically speaking, has not changed. Um, hospital care is still terrible. We have pretty much no schools, really, because professors refuse to teach because mm -hmm. they're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. So for me to say to live, it's not just being rich and living in my house. Like I still have to go to the grocery stores mm -hmm. like, and do regular stuff that I can't really do here. And one thing also that I'm realizing is that the things that we take for granted here are right. like basic necessities over mm -hmm. there that they don't have, Absolutely. like even clean water, you know, yeah. or something that might not have access to that. So it's like a lot to think of. And one thing also that I'm realizing here is like, even if you don't have the best, um, I can't speak for New York because that's the state I've been the longest, but if you don't have like the best um, financial situation, you still could, you know, be able to like, get food because they have emergency food stamp. You right. find nowhere to be, they have shelters. You know, they have like things to help you get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure in Africa or in Congo they have that, you know, system in place. Is, so yeah. I don't think I could like go back full time and live. I would I, do, like you said, like back also. I feel stuff. like if I were to move back, it'd be at a later age where I'm like done with all I need to right, do. Like so. I don't mm -hmm. see me having my kids and, you know, having them raised in Nigeria. I have family that, you know, a close family there that are well off so they can afford certain things or pay for extra to have a certain experience. It's really expensive to live there, but one thing you don't control is security. Uh -huh. Like, no matter how rich you are, certain mm -hmm. things you just can't control. And security, mm -hmm. I think, is right. the biggest thing. Because people pay, you know, you can have a generator and all this. You can be good electricity-wise. You can pay for expensive school, things like that. But just security, knowing that uh -huh. you could go from point A to B and, you know, you can call the cops so you don't feel like you're going to be robbed, things like that. So right. that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's happening that's the whole down here with that whole security thing. You yeah, can't but really it's trust not, people. no, but I feel like it's a different yeah, life. Nigeria's, it's Nigeria's, different. Really, Nigeria's really weird because, mm -hmm. like Bao just said, like, depending on your social standing and your financial standing is how you'll look at your, secure, your security status. Like, you could be from Yanopaja and be struggling, and nobody will, you don't even realize there's anything called Uber. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know there's anything called a generator. You're just, when Nepa takes light, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But there's people that live in VI, and, no, yeah, and control, they don't yeah. even know what life is without a generator. They don't know, they've don't. they never experienced a power outage in their life. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So mm -hmm. it, it's really a weird thing when you talk about moving back, because some people can, can do it because they can afford to do it. Mm -hmm. Some people... It's like, nah, they're going into an uncertain I love the thing is about affording. It's like, even if you have all the money in the world, but then... Can you the, the, that light Exactly. No, like, some people are good. I agree with some that. Some people are good. The, the government, I mean, the system, how it's working, like, if mm. you have a failed system, 
and you are the richest person, mm -hmm. you are still, like, all this money that you're spending to live well, mm -hmm. it's like money wasted because you're not getting money coming back because there's no jobs, no things, you know, exactly. that you can live yeah. off. It's hard to invest yeah. So it's hard yeah. to invest, exactly. But even Sorry. off of that point, though, I'm, so I'm coming from the perspective of someone who's gone to school in Ghana and who tried to live there for mm -hmm. about nine months to a year. Mm -hmm. So even, in, I mean, the... Infrastructure, accessibility, money-wise, like, those are all problems, like, definitely, and that I've personally experienced. Yes. But I felt that that was easier to deal with um, in comparison to the yeah. identity struggle and mm -hmm. the cultural differences that you don't necessarily think that you would feel when you're going mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. per yes. se. Right. I mean, there's, if it was up to me, I would change so much about Ghana before I moved back. But I think that the biggest thing for me is the the openness and acceptance to difference. I think that, especially in Ghana, it's a whole bunch of group think happening. A lot of people think the same, behave the same, et cetera, et cetera, because that's just what, what it's always been. Yeah. But at the, there was no point that I was in Ghana where someone didn't make it obvious that I still wasn't one of them. Right. You know, I was still American, Agreed. so you were treating me differently. You might have assumed that because I have an American background that I thought I was better than you, but just because of that assumption that America is this better life. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. And so I felt like my biggest struggle, I mean, like we said, like you can have the security of having the money and stuff like that. And even if you can deal with the, the whole internet crashing and all of that, you still don't realize how socially you might be dealing with things right. and how that might take a, a toll on you emotionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so difficult as someone who does still identify as a Ghanaian but doesn't dress the same as everybody else, doesn't speak the same way as everybody else, to then get acquainted with the people because they're always, they're not looking at you with fascination or just maybe a willingness to understand you and learn about you and understand where you come from. It's just you are different, so like there's a space between us. And that's, yeah. it's like when you when you over here, it's like I always tell my friends, um, Africans, we like our parents, they associate us different from our like regular black American friends. Like yeah. there's a different standard. Like my yeah. mom always, oh, you playing with the American boy, you're American children. <laughs> All yeah. Yeah. They different. <laughs> like they they held to a different standard. Like mm -hmm. when our parents came here, they came from the struggle and they came right. to get right. Like mm -hmm. my mom had three jobs like when I was younger. Like black, mm -hmm. like actual black Americans, like they've been through generations of the slavery. Like Africans were kind of removed from that. So they came integrated, and you, you can always tell, like, an immigrant, you know, background, like Nigerians, Liberians, Ghanaians, like, y'all go, we go to school, and we take care of business, and we don't make as many excuses because yes. we don't have that generational yes. depression yes. that they'll yes. have. And when you're going back home, it's like, it's not really home because you're removed, and they're still going to look at you as, like, an outsider. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. it's I hard. I agree with that. I really don't because I have... A few friends that have moved back home mm -hmm. and obviously you the energy you give out is how you're taken you know what I'm saying and one thing I love about being back home even though you know it's one of those touchy subjects because there's a whole lot going on is being black back home is completely different mm -hmm. being black yes. back home is just you being you right because yep. yes. being okay. black here is just later it's trying to explain yourself sometimes like right yeah you're a tall black man, you can't do this, you know, you know, you know how it is, like yeah. certain But being black back home, you're just that person. You know what I mean? You really don't know what race is back home. So there's certain comforts that come with it. But it's you more guys class. Class. It's it's class. Class. It's it's class. Class. Now, obviously, back home we know there are different cultures, different um what's the word I'm looking for? Um well, tribes. So with that you have the stereotypes that go in between, but I just think like being a black man in America is a big struggle where you, you know, you don't want to run too fast, jump too high. You don't want to bring too much attention to yourself. You don't know what that's going to lead to. If you're accused of something, it's always guilty and to prove an innocent. That's right. you know, yeah. there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's tribal, there's groups. tribal yeah. but that's certain things that it's not off introduction, but it's not like somebody sees you a mile away and it's like, this is who that person is. Like, um, once you get into conversation, you go through certain things, like they know your name. Because when you hear someone's name, you know where they're from. Right, yeah. When they talk, you're like, okay, you're from this tribe and that right, tribe. Right. But being black back home is just, 
being a part of one struggle. Like, it's not like, okay, I'm this class because I'm black. Because you can be very I would disagree. I disagree. I, would disagree. I, would disagree. I, would disagree. I think that, that I think that in general, right, people always want to feel in. So even mm -hmm. if you find similarities across the board, you will always find a way to separate yourself yes. in order to create an in-group. Yeah. So I'm even there isn't separation. But I'm just saying the struggle, the, it's different. Like, back home, the love, of the, just being black, or just being regular. Yes, but then past thing. that though, you then past that, there's there's a new layer. So okay, we're all black. I'm happy about that. But are you Ghanaian or are you American? Are you um, Igbo yeah. or are you your yeah. yeah. Like there's, there's yeah. different ways but to separate you. That, but if there's money involved, <laughs> oh, none of that matters. matters. Not, necessarily, not necessarily though, though because like, if you like the money thing is one thing, but like. None of us is boiling out of control right now. But, like, if I were to go back home and try to, like, set up a business or something, because I'm a young, I'm, all, woman I'm African well. woman, they're going to look at me like, who do you think you yeah. are? You come right. in here to do yes. what? Yes. Yes. But if yes. I was yes. of a different yes. race, if I was right. white and I came uh -huh. and I told them the they same thing, they would, with, with no yeah. money, yeah. 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 they would even give me the money to right. do the thing that I want to do. If I were to, like, pull up, pull up in Benin and just say, you know, I want to establish my business. And I feel like when people look at me physically first and be like, who do you think you are? I feel like they just wouldn't respect me because one, I'm a female, two, I'm young, and three, I'm, I'm like invade, not invading their space, but I'm coming to their, their country and trying to make money, if that makes sense. And as someone that's also African like them, they're gonna be like, you don't like. I don't think my word would be as valued as if it was like a black, a white person coming in and telling them the same things. How about a young black woman here? I mean, I, I'm still gonna be a little bit more respected though. Than you would back home. Yeah, yes. because they're gonna look at me like, like who do you really think you are? Like you coming yes. from, you coming yes. from yes. America, yes. thinking yes. that you can yeah. do no. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, I agree with that. I know people that are go, like it have breaking. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know it people that are breaking no boundaries. Which industry it is? Yes, it depends what the job is, where your neighborhood is, and who your family is, who your people, who your family knows. Things like that all also. Play but factor. money, like money, like quiets all of this because it's a strong. It's I a. Disagree. It just I disagree. Let's say, for example, I want to like. I always say this to people who are going back. The same aunties that were praising you for your pink hair mm -hmm. and your your short skirt in December Their are going to call you a shawu Show? in January yeah. Yeah. because the <laughs> listen, it changed the who. The, it's at the end of the day, these are conservative societies no, it still is. at heart. Is, and yeah. so, just you walking, like Tsunami walking around with her bald head, like at a bald, blonde bald, bald head, head. Yeah. You, you're 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 left. Like, who are you? Oh, yeah. What is this? Like, you're a bad girl all of a right, sudden. Yeah. You stand out. And so that's what, what I'm saying is like, it's not that you can definitely find that like comfort of. I'm surrounded by black people, people that speak my language or people that eat similar food to me, but they will still find ways to separate, separate you because you, you just, yeah. you are not the same. Yeah. I get that. And my fear is more inclusive, like going to that emotional stuff. In America, as crazy as it is, like there's so many different types of people no, no, and exactly. people get to hone in on like whatever can you say they New York are. And not America? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can go to New York. It's like, it's like I, for instance, like in Liberia, like, they don't understand, like, the mental depression. They don't understand, um, like, LGBTQ type yeah, of stuff. Like, yeah. that's not a, oh, you have a different choice. Like, it's like, what's you wrong with yeah. you? I know just from my mom, she would tell me stories about um, just people who were, uh, like, young men who were gay and horror stories, like, and they were growing up, how they would tie you to a tree and try to, like, beat that out of you. Like, there was a demon in you. And... You know, black people as a whole, not just even Africans, um, don't understand mental health um, and the impacts that it has on us. And we always think that, you know, either God is um, the solution for that or that there's something that you could just brush under. Yeah, and right. that's like a whole different thing you have to realize. It's but like, that's New it's York, replaced. Our president will tell you the same thing that they're telling you in Africa. But it's different, though, because in Africa, like, you know how you said, oh, like, it's across the line because you're black. It's like the things that stand out over there are the emotional freedoms that you have here. It's mm -hmm. in reverse. Mm -hmm. So when you're in America, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you're I'm liberty, white, I'm black, you're white, but I'm a liberal to do whatever I want to do. When you get back to Africa, 
all right, cool, everybody's black, but okay, you dress different. What's wrong with you? Yes. Like they, yes. Yes. they don't care about the, no, yes. they don't care about the details. They care about like what's what's like wrong. What's wrong. You. what's wrong, yes. Yes. Because the people breaking grounds like entertainment wise are like Dan Larry is dressed however he wants. But, the, but that goes with the It's entertainment and it's all not and it's a money thing. Yes. It's a money thing. If you have money, they're not making that same contact with you. When you're rich, it's just one of those things you're rich. You could do whatever you want. And it's a society where there isn't money. So if you're rich, it's just a level in which you're not making contact with people. Now, if you if you're gonna go back home and you're not setting yourself up to be comfortable, then you're playing yourself. I don't think you should go back home to settle without being financially set because it's um source of income in such a weird thing there. Like a lot of people that are making money are making money because of who they're related to, not necessarily their skill. Yes, you can break, you know, there's always a miracle there, but for the norms, the norms are like, oh, I'm this person's son, nephew, niece, and you know, I'm able to work here because I know this person or I'm related to somebody. So you want to put yourself in a place where you're not too dependent on an infrastructure that's not steady. Don't go back home and not go home with money. You, that, that makes no sense. You're in a, th you're in a place where that's money matters. I, go ahead. I get that, but then all of this, all of us, all of us talking about we want to go back home, it's never going to happen if we wait till we're rich. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? No, yes. So there has to be changes, like... And I've but had this conversation. I've had this conversation with my dad, and my dad was like, "At the end of the day, like you're the one I want to go back home. We've been chilling at home. You understand?" <laughs> and I get it. I get it. If everybody waits to get rich before they move back home, none of us will go back home. Because what is rich? Like, what? What? How much money do I need to be rich enough to go back home? And like, if I'm rich here, then like, if I'm wealthy. Do I even want to move back home at this point? So, but there has we got to meet each other both ways because I have resources that I can I have I have things that I can contribute back home, but I'm not asking for everybody to just accept me for open arms, but just be a little bit more mm -hmm. open-minded because right. that's going to scare a lot of people mm -hmm. away that mm -hmm. have these dreams like okay, I'm going to work hard in America and then I'm going to go back home. And the then they go back the home being themselves. themselves. And yes. it's like, damn, now I got to dye my hair, I got to right. put a wig on, yes. I got to dress like this because right. because I want to be accepted. Okay. And like it's a it's like What's a slippery slope. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. 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 Like I know you and I have talked about like some stuff I've tried to do back home recently. Especially like last year, I tried to go back to Nigeria and start a nonprofit, and the amount of like loopholes I had to jump through just to talk to the one person to approve this and approve that, like it just became very apparent to me that it's it would be a too difficult of a task to do without having certain resources yeah. available. Right. It, just, it just didn't make change. sense. So yeah. when is it going like, to start? Like, we can't shy away and easy. say that we're not going to go home because we don't want to deal with... I would love to go home because, like Tsunami said, there's so many things I see myself doing and giving giving back to people back there, but I just don't... I personally don't see how it would be possible It's a preparation. To do, to you got to right get pre yeah, mentally pre prepared. Yeah. And fine. But it doesn't happen it's not overnight, just me, though. though. What are you trying to do? It's like a whole... It's. I don't want to say in a lifetime, but it's like you have to really... Take your time, because you know, especially for me, I've never, I never got back, I never went back home, and I never seen um, Congo. So for me, it's like this place that my mother told me about. So because I'm so used to the Western world, and I'm so used to the things that I've done here, like going back home is, you know, being introduced to my country all over again. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm being a tourist in my own native, you know, mm -hmm. country. So I have to get used to the things that over there, because, the, you know, back home also changes. It's not like we, we think that yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. people yes. also have their own mentality, their own way of thinking, and they also have their um, own their own way of living. So eventually I will have to adapt myself to this and embrace what they have going on. I can't just come and impose who I am, because eventually if I impose the way I am here, mm -hmm. it will create backlash back home. I haven't gone to Africa at all, so definitely someone like me, I can just come in, you know, with my skirt and try to say, what's up, fam? Like, it's not happening like that. I definitely have to, like, you know, embrace what they already had going and just be, if I, if I decide to settle and be open-minded to it, I think it's going to be a meet me halfway kind of situation where they have to be understanding of me and the changes that I have as a Western African woman and me also being um, welcoming of their culture and the stuff that they have there. Like, I definitely know, like, the way I will be dressing will have to be different. I can't be going over to church with crop tops and shorts. Like, 
trust here, I think you could do that. Uh, at least I did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be, you know, to live over there as a normal, a regular Good citizen. Thing. I don't want to be that citizen from, you know, that thinks she's, you know, African, but then live all her life, you know, in the Western world and coming back here. Like, I will always, you know, stand out in the community or in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not what I want. I want to be, you know, that's, 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 that's that's advocating just... for Africans to also be open minded to us coming back home. Because, mm -hmm. like, it's true. We have to, we go, we're going there with a mindset, okay, these are the rules over there, mm. you know? And I'm not trying to be, come through and be like, yo, this is me. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you also have to be a little bit more, like Africans also back home have to also be a little bit more open-minded to understand that, okay, these people have lived a certain way right. for right. all these years. All these, yeah. We know. can't, yes. we can't persecute them. Like True. when I went back home, I wore a dress that for here is normal. The way I was insulted, <laughs> the way I, my they you told me my back. mom didn't raise me yes. properly wow. all the time. Easy. It really, and yeah. I I was I read it's a whole tradition. But thing, no, they're yeah. not used to yeah. it. Can I, they want to stay. Can so. I? Say, I have like so sorry to cut you, but it's like the irony of it all because this started with a, you talking about like Black Americans mm -hmm. and African, right? Like, do you, don't you think this is what Black Americans went through here in? normalizing their culture where it's like whites against black Americans. And has that even been accomplished, though? No, and that's what I'm saying. So, but if there are no trailblazers, then when does this happen? Because if somebody somebody has to go there and trailblaze and normalize things, because we have to realize we're a product of our environment. Mm -hmm. right. You're here normalizing yes. this because this is the environment and community you grew up in. Mm -hmm. right. They're there normalizing, Africans are there normalizing their culture like, because yeah. that's where they grew up in. But to point and say this is right and wrong, you can't go to someone's home and mm -hmm. tell them they're wrong. That's very true. I, yeah, you know but you, but you your solution listen, well, is to be rich. No, and, no, no, and no, no. Like, <laughs> you, they, That's not, has, that's that's not, not how, how it works. works. Because the way people were able to normalize thing here, like if we talk sports, it's like Jackie Robinson. Okay, he was the guy that went through all the BS so other players can play in the league. But see, what you're this like, what you're like not accounting for is like your solution is like, all right, throw the bag at it, throw the bag at it, right? No, no. You Everybody's can, not be, gonna have the bag, and even if yes. you do that, they're only accepting them for the money. It's so the, the regular money, exactly. people. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, that. Yes. everybody that came over here and had to adjust, it was a trickle down effect. You have the athletes, and you have the entertainers, you have the top, um, you know, nouveau rich of uh, black Americans, and those people set that standard, and they're slightly different. But the, the norms, it has to go across the board. Um, to Babu's point, um, having money is, is yes, in, in this world, you have to have money in order to cope with a lot of things. But I think when we're talking about something for uh, making progression, the progression has to be for people that are gonna go there and not have a lot of money. You know, when he talks about that, it's like you're basically taking yourself and you're elevating yourself to the highest class of society there, but then you're going to just get treated for what you have. Yeah. Yeah. So That's if, if everybody goes over there is rich and no, just no. makes their own way, what about the, Those are not. the people that you are not? Have to, so there rich. has to be a, a standard of All regular of them, yeah. people going over because everyone that relocates is not going to be rich. So when was the last time anybody here was back home? Two Four months, months ago. Four months ago. Um, Four months ago. Years ago. Two years ago. Oh, you said you were talking about Last year. Last year. Two years ago. So if if you've gone like recently and you compare it to the last time you were there, you see there are changes being made, like Absolutely. from food to outfits, wow. the yeah. fashion. They're yes. talking about skaters and Lagos and all that. Yeah, so wild. it takes time. Because no, there was a whole thing on skaters yeah. and Lagos, and these were people that were raised there and they're like, Yeah, they make fun of us, they call us this, that, mm -hmm. they say you know we're abominations and all that. But somebody has to go through it. And they, the they, the they're, not, culture, they're right. not rich. Absolutely. But somebody has to trailblaze it. Because at the so, end of the day, we owe, it, we owe it to ourselves to also bring our people or bring the culture forward. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. But it's not going to be like, yo, I'm here, give me a chance. No, because they're, they're norms that they go through. Like, sim same thing we're going through here with race and religion and sexuality. We have to do that for ourselves back home, where we go through and... Unfortunately, somebody has to be that person that deals with the curses and the, you know, the names, and then it becomes normal. It's like, oh, I you're just people, like this guy. I think but, people are doing it. Yeah, I just, exactly. it just, it's just too small. Like, they're doing it in it's, specific. In Lagos. So, like, hard. if you go to the village, it's, it's not happening. Yeah, right. it's, you're, but you're not going to any village and see any of that You're not going to any village and see any of that happen. Because that's how you get people out of it, out of that thing. You're not leaving the village. So Because the same thing you're going through here, there are thinkers out there going through it. 
thinkers out there going through things and they're like, oh, maybe I am crazy. Maybe no one else is going through this. But you have these conversations with people in places and they're like, yo, there are people out there like me. Where, I'm a creative, right? Mm -hmm. And back home, I didn't take an art class till I got here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So certain things when you're drawing, they're like, why are you doing? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? Go and take mm -hmm. mad science and all that. Wow. And it's like, all right, this is all I need in life. And when well, you come America, here, too. Yes. what? No, mm -hmm. no. In America, like, most I mean, creatives, I, I was just talking about this yesterday on the podcast. Um, for podcast one, most people go to college, right? right? Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of people I know that are creatives and they went to college. Why? Why did you go to college to do what you didn't need to go to college for. All you did was But when did the they experience. find out they were creative? You you figure out through the through your through the um, classes you take that they have nothing to do with what you're doing. But you, you take classes. classes. Then so those classes crazy. don't exist back home. Yeah. But I think sometimes that in the in this in a way is like we're going too much off topic, but like creatives don't really need college in my opinion. But it's you know what? Can I, I just say though, out. back to Bowel's point though, in in I don't think anyone is like, at least for me per se, like I'm not disagreeing with you in terms of the fact that, like, okay, like, but this is still great. Like, it's still possible to make this move and all that happens. I think that everyone is just sort of, like, trying to say, okay, but we can't ignore this fact that there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made right. on both parties. Mm -hmm. right. But I do believe, I think that maybe just in this conversation, we've ignored some of the benefits toward, like, moving back. Because it, as hard as it was for me, I mean, like, it ran me out. Like, I could not mm. do the full year. I really had to come back and get myself together. Whenever I think back to my time in Ghana, it hurts because there were so many different times where somebody called me a hoe on the street, somebody touched me inappropriately on the street, um... I mean, even if I'm in the chocho and I'm just going somewhere, someone is just like, the moment they hear my voice, they're calling you Akata. And we all understand Akata to, to reference black Americans, but in a negative way, nothing positive. I still was, I still had this peace. I mean, the food is fresher. I have right. coke, my skin is looking great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, like, hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, there, there there's are too many cons, from, especially for Congo, there's too many cons than pros to make me move. Um, like I said earlier, the, the whole government situation is it, very terrible. Like, let's have all the money in the world, but then some, something happened, and then, yeah, thank you. If something <laughs> happens, and then um, I get tuberculosis, malaria, you know, God some forbid. of the stuff, right, God forbid, but some of the crazy stuff that happens over there. Mm -hmm. How do I get proper care? Mm -hmm. no, right. I don't it's because good. hospital, the system over there is, First of all, when you go to a hospital, from what my mother had told me and from what I've done my research on, which is not 100% accurate because I've never gone to, um, to Congo, but from what I've known, it's not like you go to a hospital here and you get the tech, like the technology is not as advanced. Mm -hmm. Like the medications are not, you know, as advanced. Like it's just going to be a struggle. So eventually you have to reconsider like really being in that mindset of, okay, I'm going to be back home and have to go through not being able to, you know, have a job mm. because I'm studying here and I'm going to scoop in all that money. Would I be able to get a job at home? And if I do, would, I, would it be the same salary that I'm getting? It would not. Mm. Of course not. Yeah. So it's like, what am I, what, like, the only way I could see myself going back home is if I'm settling it down. Like, I'm, like, he's Retire. about to say, yeah. retiring. Yeah. I don't have to work as much because I already made a way for my kids, for myself. I have businesses from abroad that's coming in and money's coming in the bank. Yeah. That's that's the only reason I could go back home because I don't see myself like you know even petty things that we do like getting our nails done, like get my hair, like you know just be on the gram. No, you can't. Like, get all a, you can, you, you can, can get all that You can do all of that, but, but it's just like a whole atmosphere no, no, no. that so I have to I, get used to. For me, to. it's all about money. Money is if you, if you don't have money, you can't even go to the hospital. You can't. Yeah. And my sister got. I mean, but she had money, money, but even with uh, with the hospital, I didn't realize moving back to Africa is all about money until I went there with my little bit of coins. <laughs> um, within a week of my stay, it was just like the money was just moving. It's funny how um, even in Ghana, people are still using credit cards, debit cards, um, dollars, you know, and uh, I expected the food over there or the expense should be less, but then when you go out, you spend more money um, in restaurants than you spend here and it's like the same food and which don't even taste that great. Best care, my sister went to the hospital, perfect, and then she was pronounced dead the next day. Ah just because wow. they didn't have wow. um, so proper sorry. facility. And even with Ghana, when it comes to um, customer service, it's really bad. That's it's like terrible. one major thing about 
Ghana. Terrible. If you, you know, customers is big in America. Yeah. yeah. And when you go to Ghana, you go to a Jamaican food restaurant. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you go when you watch, when you go to Ghana, you will be that 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 will even make you leave Ghana the next day. Because I remember when I went I went to Ghana, so I um there was a situation where I ordered a pina colada. First of all, they don't even make good um, foreign they drinks. But they so, 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 yeah. money. so I went to when I went to Ghana for um, for Christmas holidays. I did go to a restaurant and I ordered because my first day in Ghana, I ordered um, what do you call it um, a regular um, juice. No, it wasn't a juice. It was those cocktails, like just a regular cocktail. It tastes horrible. So I was like, okay, at least pina colada should be easy to make. So this lady brought out. Um, a pina colada, and then I tasted it. It tasted like ice cake. cake. That's mashed cake, cake with um, milk. So I asked her if that's pina, pina colada. She was like, yes, the guy did it. And I was like, I don't want it. She was like, we don't do this here. <laughs> so I remember um, she brought ice cake, cake. It tasted like ice cake. I don't know if you know ice what ice cake, cake is. Like mashed cake. cake. As pina colada? As pina colada. It tasted just like ice cake. cake. <laughs> so I asked her, um, I was like, oh, is this pina colada? She was like, yeah, the guy, the bartender made it. So I was did like, you, oh, did you find that, it doesn't taste like that. Did you so find that person? I don't want it. She was like, we don't do this here. So now she was arguing with me because yeah. I don't want it and she still wants me to pay. That's one major thing <laughs> Ghanaians have. And <laughs> Africa in general, customer service is bad. It's bad, And yeah. if you are uh, very big um, on privacy, you can stay back home. It doesn't exist. Someone will just walk in your house at 8 a.m. and then call you, I'm at the door. That's good. And hey. you don't do this. That's how I grew up. That's you don't no even answer my like like How are you going to have somebody come in your house? But how can the you is, cannot. But the yeah. thing is, Milan, is like, even I, I couldn't stand all of the things that you're talking about, but <laughs> I really couldn't. But I still can't ignore like this inner calling that I feel inside that's calling me back home that's telling me like there's a part of my identity that I don't know that well or I still want to be close to and I, I also I think about raising my sons in America I don't know if I want to do that I do oh, I want them to be where I'm not going to be worried when they go out the police are going to stop them just because of how they look um, you know what I'm about, saying? So and I do, I do understand, I do understand there are also, also, there are different types of profiling, but I do, I want to acknowledge that there, the fears are different, but some of them are just a little bit easier to handle because it's also a thing where it's like, you have a village of people watching that, over your kids right, and back true. home. It's back not, home. America it's is very one thing. man for itself. You know yeah. what I'm even, saying? Even um, the last time I spoke to you, you said you went back home to actually establish a business, right? To even, work there, yeah. To work there. Mm -hmm. Even with that, back home, it's very difficult for a female to make Absolutely. it without sleeping with Wait. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So even with that, when you go back home, you know it's not going to work for you. You're not going to get it easy. It's uh, if, definitely if it's, not but easy, but not I, I feel though. that the reward is worth it. It's about who you know, to be honest, because that, me going true. me going down there without any prior Connect, connections yeah. was really held me but back. that's here, too, though. That's not just over there. I, feel, I, I, feel, I, I feel do agree with that. That's, that's anywhere. Know. It's who yes. you know. No, yes. that's, that's, yes. it's, it, no, it's not even who you know. It's who knows you. That's real. Because you can know a bunch of people. It doesn't matter. If they don't know you, you're not going that's anywhere. Even if they still know you, they still want something exactly. from you. Right. And even, it, um, I don't know if you want... That's more prevalent over there. But uh, you know what, Milan, though? Like, my cousin grew up... She's Ghanaian also. She grew up here her whole life. She went to college, and she wanted to be a journalist. And she got the job in Ghana on, on GTV or something with no experience over somebody else that was there and already had a bunch of experience, but she had because she was an American, American accent. Yeah. She could speak tree too, but mm -hmm. she had American accent and they gave her the job first yes. because that's what they want. Marketability. Yes. 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 So yes. it's like... It goes either way. It's mm -hmm. not always it that. It depends on, it depends. I think it goes both ways. Like Situation. me, I would love to go back home and establish like my brand and um, back in Benin, things like that. But uh, another, like again with the health, like my dad, my dad went back to um, to live in Ivory Coast and he had to come back home because he almost like died. Like, so that's one thing. Like, I don't, I can't see myself getting sick. If I feel myself getting Man. sick, I'm hopping in a plane. No, but seriously, with the health situation, Nigerian president flew out for months getting care in England, so... I still don't think... Do we have a, we have a president? I'm not joining you in that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joining you in that conversation. But that's just the last the, about the thing? My, my, yeah. my, Nigerian, my Nigerian passport is active, so please. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I do no. think that this then points again back to what's, what are the issues that our countries are facing in terms of infrastructure, corruption. government, corruption. corruption. Snakes swallowing money. Just, yes, no, 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 all no, no, of the time. Snakes, There's so much common, that needs to people. be fixed. I mean, Ghana, Ghana goes through <laughs> countless, countless... I mean, we've had... Three gas explosions in what two years? Yes. That's and what, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like 
what are we doing to fix these things, to change these things? I mean, people are dying left and right. And then we talk about it for, for weeks on end, but nothing happens. But none of that is going to change until, like how we're saying, we wouldn't, you wouldn't want to go back or you wouldn't want to go back. But none, none of this is going to change unless we go back and make that change yeah. and raise our children to make that change. I thought it speak for my country. I don't so know how not, South Africa is. Are you going to go to Congo? I, actually, I'm going to September. Okay. Oh. So yeah. when you're in Congo, what do you think you're going to do? Go to a resort and just chill out? No, no I'm definitely trying to... That's not true. I'm trying to visit the country. I'm trying to go to the city and also to the village. So what's the point of going to the Congo? Snake skin. Just, just my own knowledge. I cannot live on Earth and die and not go back home. Like I, that was not so happening. So one time, just go to Congo and. Do I'm that. not saying one time. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna really try first, the best and then I'm going to see how it is. Now you have to keep in mind that I'm. I grew up all my life in France. I don't know what's back home. I cannot expect back home because I am from there. It has to be automatically, or you have to go back. You have to get no. to. Right. I don't have to. You have Which to. And it's not because but it you know, doesn't make me less African than other people. It does not. It's it just makes you more I'm not, African if you're willing to help. Yeah. Yeah, I'm willing to help. But I no. I'm also aware of the situation, the social situation, the political situation that's going on over there. Mm. I do not yeah. want to put my life or my family at risk for coming in here and say, okay, we have to change this because in New York, life is like this and stuff like that, and have a whole system of people backing me up. Like, that's dangerous. Uh, We're talking politics. Yeah. Like, talking? Is, is the French part of Congo and the, uh, the non-French part, are they similar? Like... They? Yes, they're very similar because in Congo we have two Congo. We have Kinshasa and we yeah, have Brazzaville. That's what I'm asking. Now from Brazzaville is we, we still use a uh, franc CFA, which is like the French um Dark money. Ch money. Like, like is, that's is, is there a, a lot specific about. community that's more impoverished than the other? I guess? Absolutely, people from the north have a lot more money than people from the south, okay. and they de totally neglect. That totally neglect the other part. Mm -hmm. It's like the president when he does visits, he only go to one side. That's it's like he up. totally wow. forget what's mm -hmm. going on. So once I look, I remember one day. Um, one of my cousins, she called me, and she said that she graduated from school, right? Um, how do you, what, to call it back? Uh, like a, like um, a high school? Back is, yeah, high school. High school diploma. She's, first of all, when you, when you graduate from school, right? Studies, we all know studies back home are harder than here. Mm -hmm. But when you graduate from school, you don't get your diploma, like, right away. Like, that's something you have to chase after the school system to get it. And she was waiting for, she was waiting for the announcement, because they get announcement on radios and, and uh, on newspapers they if you got it. it. They announce the it. If, yes. You, they announce it if you pass your, because it's a national thing. Oh, so they right. announce it if you pass your, 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 your back. You so for get... her, she knew she passed it. However, because... Um, they didn't say it on the radio? It's, that's not what happened. I think what happened... It's just something that just happened. The government shut down all system of, like, communication. So she didn't, she didn't have n no knowledge if she had a document or not. She couldn't mm -hmm. find out until they decide for, for the government to put it back. Sometimes we get power out outage just, just because. Just because. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Just because. Yeah. Yeah. We get no water just because. Like, yeah. mind you, you have kids over there living. You have women that are pregnant that have to um, deliver the kids. They can't even go to the hospital because there's no... Necessary care, like that's a. I don't think I want and to go through that. When, um, sorry, when sorry, cousin, when Zenobia was saying um, we should um, go back home and then try to help these people, um, I disagree because you cannot help everybody. But that's not um, fair. No, 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 if you want change, you have to start change. Like, but you know, but with yeah, Africa, they can't. When change. you start the change, like, nobody will back you up. They will just leave you. Yeah, because was, because you started it. No, no, because you started. backing up Rosa Parks when she sat on the bus? But it's the, like, oh, but actually, I'm like, talking about. It started from somewhere, right? It was a But in Africa, nobody will back you up because I remember. I remember Eva Nelson. I don't know. I remember Eva Nelson started um a campaign. Um, about girls, I don't know if you mm -hmm. looked it up. Even mm -hmm. if Yashua's nigga mm -hmm. also was saying nobody backed it up. Did you back the her only back? Uh, because I don't live in Africa. I can't back it up. Uh, uh, you don't have money to back it up. I think Milan is selfish, and he just want to keep all his little bit of coins to himself. And yeah, like that's not a positive way of thinking. I'm not selfish. I'm, I'm not selfish. She's selfish. Listen, no, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, no matter what change you want to create, there's going to take some sac there's going to be some sacrificial like, work. Try, you gonna, it's going to be people. Okay, we have to keep trying. And you try can't them. say, you can't say, I don't live in Africa. You can't listen. say, I don't live in Africa, so I can't support her. Like, there's social what, media. What, what, there's so what, many what, other means to, like, support. I'm not going to spend my money on the people in Ghana. Whilst the president is, like, 
chilling while he's flying his kids and what the but that's not your business. That's so why are you gonna no? But listen, so right? It. I've been to I've gone to public schools in Harlem and taken bucks and we shipped to the Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Ghana. And um, I think LIB. Did anybody right? say thank you? So no, Did you no. get any? Why? any? I don't yeah. care about the thank you. You need a thank you. You don't need a thank you. Well, well, that's because it's not my like, 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 business. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't use my hard earned money to go to Africa and try to help my, people while these um, these um, uh, African um, leaders. Uh, um, making deals with foreign leaders and then saying. taking the money because and keeping it for there, themselves. Right? You get your yeah, family. So there. why you don't send it back to your family and encourage your family and the younger, the, the youth in your family to? All I care is about my family. If they're good, I'm good. <laughs> I don't care about because um, that's not that's family, not my business. Not right, if your family, if your family specifically is good, yeah, yeah. but the schools that they that. go to are not good, what does like does that help right. anything? So what 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 was the government doing? The, what what are you it's doing? We we all we all can look at the government. Because if I start doing like this, nobody yeah, will support. Like, people, no, have people have tried. People have tried and failed. People have tried and failed. I, I look so instead of, I don't think I should be the one helping. Um, I wouldn't say poor people. Like, you know, the, the, the um, citizens of Ghana. Um, just because um, I don't think it's my job. Um, what I can do, um, at least, is to, like, create an NGO like Bao does. And then maybe um, reach out to companies to see if they can help out. <laughs> my, what are my friends? And you know like what they you do? You can't separate your family from the environment that they're surrounded by. So if you, you can make sure that you can, they have the money. You can, but be part of the government when you just separate that's yourself. No, but that's you that's still that's can't. They're really still, no, they're still a result and they're still a product of the society that they're surrounded by. If you're not, if there's, if your society, you can have all the money in the world. You can give them the health care they need, all of that. That's but true. if they're still living there, they're coming across the different struggles no, that no, people are consistently here. finding, no, 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 and they're no, still no, going to no, be affected no, by no, that. No, so let's say, for example, you're saying your family is good, but the 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 the, the traffic laws in Ghana are terrible. They're mm -hmm. fine, healthy, Gucci bag, whatever, hey, walking across the street, get hit. There's no one is rushing them to the hospital. They're still not getting the care that they might need, and it's an emergency. So you want me so, to use my money to fly them? That's to, you, what I'm saying, I don't want it's, you to do anything. Really what I'm saying, saying is, like, if you, if you are, there's, it's too difficult. Like, you cannot draw that. lines between your family and the environment I, that I, they're I was, being. That's what I'm and saying. if you People want a good, if you, but what you I'm know? saying, though, is, like, even if you don't necessarily want to do all of the work, because I do understand that, especially, like, Africans in the diaspora typically feel a little bit more pressure to bring change to right. home than yeah. other immigrant because, groups. Right. Understandable. So. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But I still, I just think that even if you don't want to, like, make this huge, you don't want to, like, you know, pick up the fences and start, and, and start, yes, you can start small. The thing is, the thing is, this is what I'm saying. I've, I know people who have tried to do all this and nobody backed them so up until the they gave up. Um, and I also know of when uh, people making um, some um, government... Um, Government politicians uh, have like these fake NGOs where they like you know fake get NGOs. money from foreign um, countries and they spend it on themselves. Right. They never help. The trust um, factor is where he is where he lost. What so does that have to do with you? Don't have but because she said uh, we should um, try I mean, and then I, I, help them. I, I, you know what I'm saying like I if the government is not the same. I get it. I get it. But you can do your own. You can do whatever you can. But I hear your point. Tsunami, I hear your point. But my thing is, I think if you think about it this way, it's like. Here you have like the Red Cross and uh, but that is still money. and and uh, Care and all these other organizations. One, all these organizations that deal with their NGOs, not for profits, whatever, right? But then there, there's the question of again trust, right? right? It's the integrity. Of it, so but... I've seen firsthand a lot of these organizations that are well respected by the general public, and I've seen evidence of them, you know, people and leadership in these organizations stealing money, right? It did for a while stop me from contributing and giving and telling people around me, yo, you shouldn't give to this organization because, you know, because this... Because then I reach out to the people you yeah. need. And that, and that sticks with you until you see... The pot, you need to see your results. Until you see the results of, if I don't of see it, the money being put to good right. use or the result of it working the way it's intended to. But so if why you can't you be like Bao to, to directly and, ship and, the books? And, and that's my point. That's of, my point. Maybe Milan just hasn't seen that. So he has to be in a position you don't where he sees. Bringing awareness right. makes change as yeah. well. You're right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I, it, sometimes it takes seeing the results positively before you invest personally. Corruption. Period. It's from top to bottom. It's the leaders in government, it's the random guy in the village, you know what I'm saying, who comes up on oil and decides to do whatever he wants with the bread instead of redistributing the wealth to his community, you know. 
people that just want to be called chiefs in their random villages and have nothing to show for it, but building, you know, one house for themselves. It's across the board. Because at the end of the day, I'm not wasting my time. Exactly. No, no, I and agree with you. Slope. I agree with you. But for then a lot, we will never do we'll anything. Never exactly. Exactly. If we're all you're deciding that right. we don't want to invest, that it's not worth it, that we need to see products, then we're not going to do some anything. People, some people will invest blindly. And that's the reason why a lot of these uh, NGOs flirt. No, I'm being serious. No, that's yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. the situation. There's, some, pe- there's some people that invest blindly in these organizations because they see the bigger picture. They have faith that it's going to work out somehow. Or they just have excess bread and they're willing to spend it. It's a tax write off for some people. Right. Yeah. For, some, for people, some people, they don't have they don't have the bread to to just you know, throw away to be like oh I'm a but we're not talking money though let's just say okay um, some people don't have it some people don't have it let me tell you about I'm talking about, about Africa you were saying okay. create awareness Ghanaians don't care about stuff would you go to a school or on the street and be like hey guys I'm here to create awareness nobody it's about money but you're about, here though you can create the awareness create awareness in my pockets I cannot believe you're saying these things no because it's funny because when you hear and you hear stories like oh snakes swallowing 20 million when I thought about it I was like so a Nigerian have 20 million and this, the streets, the roads are bad. When you hear like stories where um, Ghanaian, um, Ghanaians came to America to sign a deal with Americans um, for like 8 million, where is this money going? Like when you go to Ghana, you don't see all this money. You so why should, I, why should I waste my time and then create awareness um, when, the, when these people are not doing anything but then feeding their pockets? All right, so when you, know, I, when I Babo, you send, you me, send um, books to your country, right? Yeah. And, and those, I know a whole bunch of people that have nonprofit that wait. Build so you send books to your country, books that they didn't have before. Yes. So now they're going to get knowledge that they wouldn't have, Which they wouldn't have had before. Society. And yeah. they're yeah. learning yeah. more. Yeah. So yeah. then yeah. those people that got those books that Bowel sent, they're getting more education. You know what and what then that's just. You know what it but is? it's a full, it's a full right. circle though. With the and that's the thing. Sometimes I, I I don't like that. I feel like the awareness thing is. Everyone's like, raise awareness, post this, post that, talk about it, talk about it. We've been talking about social injustice in the country all the last three years. People still getting shot in the street. You could bring all that awareness. If it doesn't lead with the action, That's it's true. not going to matter. I think the biggest um, misconception or misuse of awareness is that we just talk about it. And we, it's, it's nice that we're having these conversations, but if there's no action that follows it, we're not really doing anything. And it's like, you know, from the Black Lives Matter to raising awareness about some of the bombings that happened overseas or even, uh, uh, you know, agricultural problems and things like that. It's nice, and we'll talk about it on social media for about a week, but when it fades away, that's all it was. It was just a fading through your timeline. Mm -hmm. And it's like raising awareness at the end of the day. You got to have the fun. Something has to to arise. People raise awareness so people with money can do it. And when he's talking about, you know, giving out uh, blindly, when you're in a situation where you see it countless times, somebody like him, he's seen it fails. There, he needs the hard evidence, and I can't blame him yeah, for not right. wanting to. You know what I'm saying? That's if fine. I keep seeing, if that's I keep fine. seeing people, he needs to see it, right? Right. But didn't that's somebody say earlier portion. that in these villages they never even heard of Uber before, right? So how can somebody say I want to make money by driving Uber if they've never right. even heard of Uber? You have to bring that awareness to these places mm-hmm. where they've right. never yeah, heard yeah, of it I before, yeah, so I that they want to take those steps to to do right. those things. Yes. I, agree. I think it's really important to bring awareness awareness to the country itself because there's a lot of villages and smaller cities that haven't heard of a lot of things and they may not believe that certain things are possible because they've never heard of it before. They don't know if they're completely blind and never heard of it. And 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 there's parts of Ghana, in northern Ghana, they've probably never heard of Uber before. Right. Yeah. So they're not going to think that, oh, let me work, save some money so that I can go to the city and drive Uber. That's not even in their mind right. because yes. they never heard of Uber. So you got to go and bring that awareness that, yo, th- this ex- this exists. And what I'm saying with the awareness, it takes some type of sacrifice. This pros and, and, the cons. Sa- and, the pro- and the pros and cons is like, at the end of the day, the sacrifice you have to make, everyone has a different thing of what it's worth. At the end of the day, the base of everyone's need, no matter who you are, you have to make sure that self is, pre- is preserved. Absolutely. Like, we're all natural. Absolutely. We have to make sure that we of ourselves course. are good. And Africans definitely take care of self. Exactly. And that's the reason why. If he, even, if even he has it to on, do it. Like, yes. if, if, I'm, if, I'm a, if I'm a traditional... Nigerian man in a village somewhere, and I came up on $8 million off of oil that they found in my backyard. 
am I going to keep that money for my family or am I going to redistribute that wealth in my community and make sure that everybody's taken care of my community? You want to keep it for your family. Correct. And that mindset but it is takes the reason. But it takes for your character and your personality to, to Correct. care Character, about character and personality, yeah. that, I character and personality, that, personality that I have because I was born and raised here. Right. Someone that's born and raised Whoa. over there. Which oh, brings back to why. I think, I think, so, I think we're taking it to the I feel like overseas when it happens, you'll see those same people that you know, maybe came from nothing, come up on some bread somehow, whether it was legitimate or fraudulent, and then they immediately just start flashing around their wealth. They want everybody around them to know they have it. And in doing so, they become a target, and they end up still spending the money on them. From what I've seen, they spend the money on themselves, and then they become part of the category that they used to hate. It's like, we have it, but everybody else doesn't have it, but we're going to turn a blind eye to everybody that doesn't have it. So that perpetuated environment of people that see but say nothing I think that's finish. a lie. Finish. If I, if that's not fair. If, I don't I'm want not, to say that I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not generalizing. What I'm saying is if I already, <laughs> wait, if I already have the mindset that I'm broke, I don't even know what I'm going to eat tomorrow, I don't know what my kids are going to eat tomorrow, I just came up with $8 million. The first thing I'm doing is t making sure that my family okay. never goes broke again. Right. That makes You're sense. Sure. That's what I'm saying. But, but what I would say, no is, what I, what I would say is, if sense. I was somebody from the city, maybe, that already had a, you know, some sort of bread, some sort of financial foundation, whatever, if I came up on some bread like that, obviously I could think outside, outside of self and think to redistribute things I where I can. False. People wait, are not doing wait, that. So no. But I, no, but I, I see people do it, though. We that's criticize the these, like, it's like I the same thing. I see people do it. I see people do it back home. I've seen instance. people reinvest their bread into their communities, and their communities are way better now. No, but they only do it just to be famous. Right. That's one. It's, it's a business strategy. Yeah, look so look that. They they do it status, really. so. Nobody do. But that's, it's not even, to, it's not even to be famous, like, the it, value, like, if I live, if I, if I live in a community, and let's say I deck my home up, and my home is worth one, one million, Please whatever. Hey. At the end of the day, because <laughs> my community and my surroundings are still trash, I, I can never, like, I can never be as great as oh, I want to be. No, no, people need to adapt that mentality. But people look like that every day. I you get it. Like, I mean, right let me, now, let me, let me address something real quick. And you let can't me even address drive something your car real quick. Across the bridge to get to the home. Let me address right. something real quick. Like the whole Milan situation. Like I get what you say. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I get, <laughs> I get <laughs> what you're saying, <laughs> but like the. <laughs> Your mindset behind it is on some like I'm not gonna spend my money right. to do that. Like at the end of the day, you still spend your money on foreign stuff. You still spend that's your true. money. This is but worth that's money. Me, right? money. That's the one that's thing I, I never. I, that's my one true. biggest thing I wait, always wait, tell people. But never tell somebody how to spend, how to spend, spend their, their money. money. Right? Because we but all slaving to get spending, the money he's different saying ways. That, He's saying that in comparison to somebody else. It's like, why would I spend my money when this person has the money? And, right. Like, that's a different that's a different argument than, yo, I don't have it like that. Right now, I'm focused on myself. That's a whole different no, no, argument. No, it, I think that when it's, we have to create is to um, make sure we let um, people in Africa know what the governments are doing with their money. <laughs> so we got to create awareness. No, we have to create awareness about that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because awareness of what does Buhari, your president, why is your president so never in this country? <laughs> <laughs> why is your president never so in this country? Wait, wait, Tom, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, I'll, I'll take that. What? So you're okay with awareness for government, but not awareness for a situation that... He wants transparency. Uh, if if they want me to use my money, if they can make me the president, sure. If I'm president, of of course I will make changes. I'm not gonna have um, snakes in my house swallowing money. Um, even when I make deals with other foreign countries, I'll I'll um, I'll account for the money I have. Um, you know, if and then ask the community if they want us to share it. <laughs> no. Let me let me address this first off, like. We have to stop with, you said something where you're like, so in the village. So now it's circumstance, yes. not, not geographical Correct. place. So and you that, can't, wait, 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 wait. You can't say the man in a village back home because the man is broke. If you broke here, like yep. the people who win the lottery yeah. and disappear from family here. Nice. And then five years later, they're broke. So it's not a black, African, Nigerian, no. Ghana, whatever I thing. Agree with you. It's just being a broke thing. You thought you would never have it. You have it. You don't even know. They don't know the difference. Exactly. exactly. They, they, so they, now, they yeah. But they, yeah. there are people. Character is not a thing that exists in America and doesn't exist in Africa. Absolutely. It's just situations make you Absolutely. cold. Like, certain right. situations can make you cold. Now, I spent, I spent my first 12 years back home. 
So certain things are normalized to me. I know people that take care of their community. I know people that keep their money. I have them all in my bloodline. So it's like I have family that are rich as shit, don't care about the next person. And I have family that take, like, my grandfather, the whole block knows him, and everybody's good because of him. And I can go certain places for life because of what my grandfather did. So the character of a man is not has nothing to do with being back home or here. Like, Agreed. that's that. So whether you have money or not, I, that's one thing I was trained. And the awareness thing, like, you, we all have to take ownership. Mm. Like, you're not just going to yes. fly out your whole family yes. and they put airplane emojis on their yes. bio. <laughs> and they like, no, yes. but you can, you can be responsible for one life. And just be good of that. Like, it's also right. a Christian thing. Like, where yes. you can win or so. Wait. Yes. So, I, like, I do a lot of charity work here. Like, I've fed over 5,000 people here. And I can still send stuff back home and help out. Like, because I know that I'm not there. I don't know how the situation is. Like, one thing I'm not going to do is speak on Nigeria. Because I don't live in Nigeria as much. Even though I've been 12 years there and I go back and forth once in a while. Like, I spent a couple weeks there. But I don't live there. You know, you know, yeah. when you're there for two weeks, it's like, oh, yeah, and then yeah. you out. So yeah. I know, I know yeah, what yeah. it is. Yeah. But I can still say, okay, I can help one person. I can send books because education is the beginning, like of everything, where you yes. normalize certain yeah. things. Yeah. Where you go back there now, the things you're complaining about, nobody else is because it's normal for them. Mm-hmm. But if you keep complaining now, a whole bunch of people are complaining. It's just complaints. service changes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think you have money, right? Compared to the people that live there. If you're the rich guy saying this is how I want it, and a bunch of other people are saying this is how I want it, it's gonna America. change. You think yes. Africans, America, you just take it like it's no. easy. Africans and Americans are the same people. It's just what you're used to. Like some people don't have food on the table. They can't worry about morality. They can't worry about service. You're just basically trying to eat and be safe. While you're here, and you know, you have security, you have food and all this. And so I think if you were to bring somebody here and grow them in the community, they will be off the community. And if you bring, like we all are, you know, in a different community and we've blended in and we've normalized those things. I just feel like when things are on the same page or on the same scale, then we can compare. So we have a whole lot of work to do. We got to, you know, trailblaze, go back home and make some changes and let people know certain things can be better. Until then, we really can't compare. watching and if you liked this episode don't forget to subscribe like and share see you next time